What is up, YTPC? Andrew here, aka Bluefin Piper, coming at you from a chilly, overcast, uh, somewhat sunny maybe, <laughs> Saturday here in New Jersey. Uh, doing well here in New Jersey. My boy Finn there, enjoying a little bit of outside time uh, today as we continue our social distancing sequesterment here in uh, Jersey Shore area of New Jersey. Uh, and uh, thankfully we can get outside today. It's been a little rainy uh, and kind of a really, uh, March went out, I guess, like a lion, I don't know, but uh, definitely we had some early spring before all this craziness happened. And um, the March really just kind of no snow, but uh, rainy, a lot of rain and cold weather. So it's kind of continuing right now and it's nice to have a day to get out, and try to enjoy some outside time. Well, I hope you guys all are doing well. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and sane in all this craziness. And today, I thought I'd take a little break from um, my normal, uh, it's been a lot of Virginias and Vapors and Burleys lately, so take a little break, have a little aromatic break. And um, I saw that uh, our good friend, Garbage Man Piper Mel, was, uh, had gotten a really nice nine millimeter uh, cob from Germany, a Missouri Meerschaum, that was uh, retrofitted, I guess, and with a custom uh, stem. Uh, looks beautiful, by the way, Mel. Very nice. And he was also smoking some Missouri Meerschaum pouch blends, which I have not tried any of those, but um, they sounded good. Uh, however, I do have, and then I did see a comment, I think it was from Jay Mouton in one of the videos asking about the 150th anniversary blend, which I happen to have a tin of, and here it is, guys. So I'll give you guys a look at it. Um, and this this blend I picked up a while ago before all this craziness started with the intent of getting to try it with a good friend of mine and coworker. Uh, we usually get together maybe once a month or every month and a half or so and have a little pipe meetup. And he, uh, uh, he is a big aromatic smoker, loves aromatics. And I thought this would be a fun one to try with him. Fortunately, <laughs> uh, enter coronavirus and we have not had a chance to get together for multiple months. So I thought it was time to crack this one open and give it a try. So. All right, let me just talk a little bit about the tobacco real quick. Um, again, really nice tin. If you guys see, um, well done tin art on this one to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Missouri Meerschaum. Pretty amazing. Um, this is blended, uh, it's by Lean, blended by Rasoulette, which is probably why I think it's, may only be available on um, pipes and cigars and I don't know, maybe a few other places, but, um, and it's about $13.99 a tin, I think right now. Uh, and it is a, Vir a Burley Virginia blend with uh, Virginia Cavendish and a vanilla topping. So I've smoked one bowl of this so far, uh, this morning actually, and so this is really kind of a impress second impressions, first impressions video. Um, just wanted to give you guys some quick thoughts on it in case anyone was interested. Um, so definitely some cool, very nice tin art, nice collectible if you're into that kind of thing maybe. Um, and as you open it up here, you got the standard kind of packaging. And um, I have to tell you guys, I was a little underwhelmed. Um, you've got this kind of black uh, insert, which you know really isn't um, very fancy at all. And I don't know, something about the black insert just doesn't really do it for me at all. But uh, once you get past that, you can see you've got some nice, um, nice looking pressed cakes, uh, crumble cakes, I guess. Um, and um, so I'll give you guys a look. These are stuck together pretty good. I'm gonna give you guys a look as you can see. I got, there's really, there was a, a third, like a half of a third on top of this one. And it's supposed to be 1.75 ounces, I guess. Um, you know, we don't get two ounces anymore. Um, <laughs> so hopefully you guys can see that uh, it's coming in. And a nice looking cake. It's uh, got some good thickness to it. And it's uh, very, uh, you know, it's almost, almost, um, I mean, I wouldn't call it a plug, it's a crumble cake, but it's, it's not uh, crumbling apart super easy. It's, it's pretty stiff, held together pretty well. Um, moisture level is actually really nice. You can pretty much break it up and smoke it right away. It's not like the Seattle Pipe Club crumble cakes that need some dry time. And um, in general, nice looking plug. It's a little underwhelming, I have to say, that when you open this big tin, you get these kind of, you know, two little cakes for, for what you pay for an aromatic. It's kind of like, hmm. I don't know, that, that part of it I'm not so sure of, but they're nice looking, uh, nice looking tobacco. And as you guys saw, you could see the, um, you know, some, um, you can see kind of the, the breakup there the, of the Burleys and the Virginia and, and Cavendish. And it looks like a, a nice mix of 
actually, you know, what seems to be good quality Virginias and Burleys uh, mixed in there. It's not all Cavendish. Um, and the fact that it's Virginia Cavendish is nice. Uh, I think, I think, you know, I'm not an expert here, but I think a lot of the, the aromatic, American aromatics are using a Burley-based uh, Cavendish uh, process, which might give you more of that kind of harshness, or if you don't like Burleys, that could play to it. But anyway, um, back to the blend here, guys. This, uh, um, so it's not, I'll give you a quick tin note. You know, really, really nice tin note on this, and it's, it's not cloyingly sweet, aromatic tin note. Actually, what I get is very similar to the recent re-release of the McBaron London blend. Um, you get this kind of interesting, you know, cocoa, vanilla, almost a confectionery kind of smell, this like uh, chocolate, what I, what I call the chocolate covered cherry confectionery store kind of smell. Definitely some cocoa notes. Not a lot of, uh, and the vanilla is there, you know, not a lot of Virginia grassy hay at all. I don't pick that up. Um, not a lot of nuttiness or earthiness, really just kind of nice, um, nice cocoa, uh, kind of burly wheat and um, cherry, almost, even though it's vanilla, a vanilla topping, I almost, you do kind of pick up some kind of cherry notes and that could be the Cavendish causing that. I don't know, but uh, I like it. Tin note definitely gets a, uh, an A plus. So if you like that kind of burly uh, London blend tin note, it's very similar. Um, and the smoke itself, get your lid here. All right. All right. So the smoke itself, and I'm going again, this is kind of a first impression really. So I'm just gonna give you guys the notes that I kind of mentally took when I smoked the first bowl. The first light, and probably maybe the first third of the bowl, um, you definitely get more of that burly flavor, burly weedy flavor, um, with this really nice kind of mellow vanilla topping. And like I said, you almost have, it almost has kind of a cherry, very light, subtle cherry tone to it. Um, but you know, vanilla, caramel with kind of this, almost this cherry feel, which I think might be the sweetness from the Cavendish. But the first kind of third of the smoke has got a really nice burly flavor on the retro hail. You get, you know, I mean, you can um, subtly kind of maybe pick up some of the Virginias, but it's not, the Virginia to me is not dominant. Definitely get a nice uh, vanilla flavor with it. And again, it's not cloyingly sweet aromatic. It's a subtle vanilla. Um, so I would kind of agree with them that this is a mellow blend. It's not, you know, this would be a nice blend if you like Burleys and you want to try an aromatic and you don't want to go crazy. Uh, this would be, you know, maybe a good one for you to try and experiment with. But as you get kind of halfway into the bowl, for me, the Burleys kind of gave way and I got more of that Cavendish uh, Virginia flavor out of it. Uh, and certainly uh, towards the very bottom, it, it kind of got, kind of lost some of the flavor there in the last kind of third of the bowl and just got more of that kind of cabinet. It wasn't terrible. Uh, it wasn't completely bland. It still got some nice vanilla flavor, um, but I lost some of that nice burly note to it and got more kind of Cavendish. You get that, uh, for me anyway, this kind of Cavendish mouthfeel, um, kind of coating in the mouth. And um, no, uh, very smooth blend, no, no harshness. Uh, no, no strong burn on the retro hail. No, um, no tongue bite for me though. I, I guess maybe if you trained on this, you probably could give yourself some tongue bite. Um, but it's a, a pretty mellow blend overall. And the other thing I'll say is it is nice, kind of like Lane One Q. Um, I happened to uh, bring my dog back from the walk, and I don't smoke in the house, but I brought the pipe in and had some, you know, some smoke, of course, um, lingering. And I uh, put stuff away, came back down, and could smell that really nice uh, kind of lane one Q like smell. If you're familiar, just the smell that people associate with kind of my grandfather smoking a pipe, which is really nice. And that's, and so I think, I think the room note on this is really, really nice. Um, and I think it's something people would like. It's a good one to smoke around friends. So so overall, my first impression on this one, guys, I think, you know, it's definitely a blend I like. I think it's a great, it'd be a nice 
um, kind of burly aromatic blend with a cup of coffee in the morning, fantastic. Um, I, I think the only reservation I have is, is it, you know, is it, is it better than the bulk aromatics you can buy? Um, my preference would be Scotty's Trout Stream. I've been talking about that a lot lately. To me, that's a much more affordable and similar quality blend. Nice vanilla uh, caramel flavor to that one. Um, this one, I think for me, you know, I probably, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'll buy it again. It's nice to kind of have, I would say it's worth buying to get the tin if you're like the tin art um, and to try it once because it is a special blend from Missouri Meerschaum's 150th anniversary. Um, but I think it's not something I would buy a lot of or stock up on. Um, and interestingly, it might be a nice blend. I guess a final note, it might be one of those interesting blends that, you know, you could um, kind of break up and then maybe put some Perique in and that might actually give it another dimension, which would be interesting. Um, and it might actually age, I guess, uh, somewhat well. The tobaccos certainly look like they're a decent quality tobacco. Um, so, you know, good quality tobacco, nice looking crumble cake, um, a nice presentation uh, from the tin itself. So overall, maybe worth a pick up uh, to try. Uh, but, you know, I think there's other bulk aromatics out there that, you know, would be uh, a better affordable option if that's what you're looking for. So, all right. Till next time, guys. Hope you guys all have a great, safe, healthy weekend. Tight lines. Happy smokes. Take care.